Legends of Runeterra is one of the best free-to-play card games out there. The game is extremely generous with the number of cards you're gifted and how easy they are to collect. In order to have a large card collection, you simply need to grind away, and in order to build a solid deck, you need to farm rewards until you can craft a meta deck. In this video, we're going to look at several beginner decks which either use lots of cards from the pre-made starter decks, or a large number of common and rare cards with few or no epic cards. So without further ado, let's dive in. This is Legends of Runeterra Budget Beginner Decks. This video has been done in collaboration with Bomber TV. Please remember to like and subscribe and turn on the bell notifications too. So let's dive in. This is Shirima Burn and features cards primarily from the Shadow Isles but also features some of the new Shirima cards as well. It's a very follower heavy deck with 25 in total. Like many aggressive decks, the average card mana cost is very, very low, with every single card in this deck costing 3 or less mana. It's also extremely budget with no epic or champion cards needed at all. The idea behind this deck is to simply be very aggressive, in particular overwhelm your opponent with a wide board and later on burn them thanks to burn effects on the cards like Doom Beast's Drain effect or Phantom Pranks' effect where they deal 1 to the opponent's nexus every time an ally dies. A wide board is simply a board where you have lots of different cards on the field, as you can imagine if you, you, time you put a new card there, it adds to the kind of the wideness of your, of your field. Uh, and burn simply refers to damage being done via effects or spells that damage your opponent's nexus. You have a very explosive turn 1 by starting with a pesky spectre into ravenous butcher and following up with a dune keeper for a total of 7 damage on turn 1. This is possible because both Pesky Spectre and Ravenous Butcher cost 0 mana and you can spend your turn 1 mana on summoning Dune Keeper who in turn summons a Sand Soldier as a part of its effect. So this is obviously one of the most aggressive turn 1s that are possible in the game, if not the most aggressive. Later on just continue to summon units and go wide with lots and lots of cards, whilst your Phantom Prankster deals 1 obviously every time an ally dies. A Blighted Caretaker kills an ally on summon to summon two saplings, so this is a super easy way of helping you get that wide board. Uh, the saplings are ephemeral, so they die at the end of the round or on strike, and this means you can deal lots of easy damage via Prankster's effect, as these saplings obviously die at the end of the round or on the strike, and obviously uh, Blighted Caretaker you're going to be targeting a card to kill, so all of this really adds up and your opponent's nexus health is going to drain away. And finally, finish off the game with your burn spell, Ruinous Path. Ruinous Path is a fantastic new card which draws one, and if you've slain a unit this round, drain two from your opponent's nexus. So not only does this help burn your opponent's nexus, but the drain effects on this and your Doom Beast will help keep your nexus healthy enough to survive the game long enough to hopefully burn your opponent's nexus death. Obviously you're going to be very aggressive, so you're not going to be protecting any damage done to you, so any form of survival whatsoever is key to helping you win. And as you can probably see here, there's a common theme in this deck, everything leads towards damaging your opponent's nexus in, with some sort of effect. This deck is Elise Spiders featuring cards from Noxus and Shadow Isles. Elise Spiders is pretty much what you've already got in the Noxus Shadow Isles starter deck with just a small tweakings. Removing the bad cards and including more commons and rares which make this deck much stronger. The deck is aggro meaning you'll be playing aggressively to finish the game quick. As a result many of the cards have small mana costs basically to have a stronger early game. As you can see, this is reflected by 33 cards costing 3 or less mana. The game plan is simple as you possibly can get uh, in Legend of Runeterra. Just steal as much damage in the early game thanks to one drop such as Precious Pet and other aggressive early units such as Legion Saboteur. Then later on burn your opponent with burn spells such as Nox and Favor and Decimate. Burn spells are simply spells that deal damage for those who you're basically wondering what it is. I'm aware that lots of YouTubers use all these words and terminologies that just completely go over some people's head. If you do reach late game, you have Captain Farron who can finish off your opponent with Overwhelm and then the Decimate spells he generates when summoned. At this stage, your opponent should have pretty much very slim or small amounts of Nexus health left, so this is basically a win condition if needed. 
Elise should not be protected more than usual, just treat her as a normal unit. On games where she does level up, she can actually be quite strong, but again, don't be overprotective against her unnecessarily. Save your spells to take out your opponent's key units, rather than saving Elise. And I know this sounds a bit controversial, basically, even though the deck is named after her, but bear with me here. Focus on having a very, very good opening hand, and Mulligan Heavy for 1 drops. If you are lucky enough to have 1 drops already, keep them, and then Mulligan everything else for 2 drops. Mulligan basically means searching for certain cards from your opening hand when you're given the opportunity to remove the ones you don't need, so this will obviously be doing right at the start of the game. It's important to get your opponent's nexus health as close to 10 or even lower uh, if possible, so don't worry about sacrificing units on attacks if this does lead to them dealing a bit of damage. When you do reach that endgame stage, then you can try and finally burn out your opponent with burn spells such as Noxin Favor, Decimate, and Captain Farron who I discussed earlier on. So overall this is a very, very, very fast deck, uh, both for winning and losing. So as long as your win rate stays above 50%, then you're good to go. This is Demacia Allegiant, or Mono Demacia, and this is one of the decks which has been staple for Legends of Runeterra in that kind of Demacia mid-range category. This basically means the deck revolves around combat with a strong peak around mid-game. This is actually a fairly aggro version of the deck with no cards costing 6 or more mana. This is a budget version and you can easily look at incorporating elite synergies by adding your Garen or this can be upgraded to an even more mid-rangey version with cards such as Citria the Bold and Genevieve Elmhart. Two fantastic exotic cards and I would suggest removing your Screeching Dragons if you want to fit these cards into this deck. I want to point out that this is the budget version and is actually a starting point for a much stronger version of the deck and it's actually performing quite well and it has been performing quite well for quite a while now. The idea is to take as much value trades and gain as much value as possible either in terms of the cards in the hand or crushing board presence. So basically this means getting preferable battle trades for those who aren't really familiar with what the kind of value trade uh, term means. It's still important to get a good early game in the opener, but not as important as you have the tools to stabilise and regain the board control, either by recovering with Radiant Guardian, who has life still when summoned after one of your unit's deaths, or punishing the opening attack of your opponent by casting fast spells such as Single Combat and Concerted Strike, which both involve striking your opponent's cards. This should be quite preferable for you, as your Demacia cards love combat and their effects and stats are suited to this. Then later on, you won't have trouble winning, but buffing your board with wide buffs thanks to Vanguard Bannerman or for Demacia, as well as pushing for lethal with the finisher, Relentless Pursuit. As your deck is suited to combat, this card triggers a rally so you can attack again, and you should have a lot of buffed up units alive thanks to Bannerman and for Demacia. So this deck is designed for basically introducing beginners to that mid-range strategy in Legends of Runeterra, which in my opinion is the most fun out of the three decks that I'm going to be talking about in this video. And finishes like this are exactly why. This is Noxus, Piltover and Zorn Burn, which is another aggro deck. Many beginner decks are aggro as the cards are typically cheaper to craft and the playstyle is simple, deal as much damage as you can as fast as you can. Many control boss cards are usually exotic, making them more expensive to craft as a result. Um, the budget rule applies to this deck as well, with a crazy amount of cards being common, 30 in total. It also has a reflective aggro theme with everything but Darius and Decimate costing 3 or less mana. With this deck you want to do as much damage as possible early on, then close the game out with burn spells such as Get Excited, Noxin Favor and Decimate. You have plenty of ways to deal damage as well, with lots of units dealing direct damage to the enemy necklace with their effects, such as Imperial Demolitionist and Boom Crew Rookie. Other cards such as Legion Grenadier and Use Cast Salesman incorporate burn damage via last breath. This means when the unit dies, or in Use Cast Salesman case, his casks die, it will deal damage to the opponent's nexus. So this is a nice alternate way to also deal burn damage quickly to your opponent's nexus. 
Most of the time you should be able to win by turn 6 when you play a leveled up Darius and go for the winning attack. Darius levels up when your opponent's nexus has 10 or less mana, which gives him a crazy 10 power once he does level up. One attack from him with his overwhelm is usually enough to win, or at least put you in a very good winning position. Don't be tempted to use Mystic Shot or other removal spells on units, you need them to go directly to burning the enemy nexus. There are obviously exceptions to this rule, but this is generally a pretty good rule of thumb to apply when using this burn theme deck. Again, this is a very, very, very fast deck and a pretty fun one to use too, but not so much fun for your opponent. I hope you like that pun. Frostbite midrange budget builds on a loss of the cards you receive in the Freeze and Decay deck as a part of the login bonus. This is a variation of a meta deck that revolves around cards having 5 power and a Frostbite mechanic called Frostbite midrange, which consists of cards from Freylord and Noxus, unlike Freeze and Decay which has the Shadow Arts instead of Noxus. This is a budget version of the deck which is reflected with the high number of common cards, 21 in total, and no exotics, and is more themed towards the Frostbite part of the meta deck version. The main idea of this deck is to Frostbite enemies and level up Ash as soon as possible, as she's basically a win condition. When she levels up, any unit with zero attack will be unable to block, and this includes Frostbitten units. So Ash already Frostbites a unit during attack, Add in, say, a harsh winds on top of that, and your opponent will be unable to block most of the attackers, giving you a win condition. To get there, we'll use both spells like Brittle Steel and units such as Icefell Archer. Both of these cards utilise the Frostbite keyword. They both have a low mana cost, so you can really start the Ash levelling up process very early on in the game. To get even more advantage from our Frostbite strategy, we'll use challenges such as Trafarian Glory Seeker and Rhyme Fang Wolf, basically to value trade the enemy units. Glory Seeker can challenge a unit with Frostbite to quickly take them out with its 5 damage, and Rhyme Fang's effect will instantly kill a Frostbitten unit regardless of their health. Two fantastic cards in this deck. A good early game can be kicked off with Omen Hawk and Avaris and Trapper, which can buff all the cards you draw, or you can draw a 5-5 Enraged Yeti respectively. So overall this deck really is good from start to end, which is obviously going to be your mid-range peak as it's a mid-range deck. So there's some pretty solid options and this can easily be upgraded into the well-known meta art type, Frostbite Midrange. Jinx Aggro Budget is a budget version of the discard aggro deck which is currently in the meta. It features cards from Piltover and Zorn and Noxus and revolves around the discard mechanic. Lots of cards have a low cost with no cards costing more than 4 mana and the only 4 mana card cost is your boss Jinx. It is very budget with 27 cards co being common and no exotic cards featuring this deck. The main idea of this deck is to be aggressive. We do this by taking advantage of the discard mechanic, both to draw cards and never run out of fuel, as basically most of the cards in this deck require you to discard a card to activate their effects. On top of this, many cards benefit from being discarded, so this synergizes perfectly. Cards like this include Flame Chompers and Jury Rig. Your ideal opening hand is basically summoning a Zorite Urchin, which effect discards a jury rig, which is in turn then summoned when discarded. This means you can deal free damage on your very first turn, which is perfect for this aggro deck, which is all about dealing quick damage. We also like to go wide, which means having lots of units on the field, and take advantage of Arena Battlecaster, which buffs all the units' attacks and goes basically in flat kill, so you can really deal quick damage in a very aggressive style. Later in the game, your opponent will start to defend themselves and we can finish them off with burn cards such as Get Excited and Nox them for 4, which deals directly to their units or nexus. Aim for the opponent's nexus primarily, but aim to take out your opponent's key units if you feel this would be more beneficial. Your boss card is Jinx, who has quick attack to basically take out your opponent's units and fits into the theme of this discard deck as she levels up when you have no cards in your hand, which is obviously going to be easier if you're discarding them all. When she's leveled up, she will help you draw cards each turn with her effect, which obviously you can in turn discard, and she also generates a super mega death rocket, which deals 4 to your opponent's nexus and 1 to all their units, a very powerful burn card. 
Overall, a very consistent and fast deck, which can be upgraded into the well-known meta art type, Discard Aggro. This is Elise Burn Budget, which features cards from Shadow Isles and Noxus. It's a very aggressive deck with all but two decimates, costing three or less mana. It's a very budget with 29 commons and no exotics, and has lots of cards that either deal burn damage, basically direct damage to your opponent's nexus, or spider themed cards like the one your champion has in this deck, Elise. The main idea of this deck is to burn your opponent as quickly as possible, and you can accomplish this with lots of burn cards like Nox and Favor, and units like Doom Beast. Elise can be quite threatening with all the spiders in the deck, which obviously makes her level up quickly. The spiders themselves work very, very well together, and a frenzied skitterer can be devastating on a wide board, where you have lots of units, and obviously all these spiders with the fearsome, your opponent just won't be able to block them. This deck has lots of very cheap cards, but also runs the risk of running out of fuel quickly, aka having no cards in your hand, and it obviously does this pretty quickly, which is why we draw lots of drawing cards, like Glimpse Beyond and Stalking Shadows. Stalking Shadows is pretty great, as we play lots of on-play cards, which obviously have certain effects, like Frenzied Skitterer and Doom Beast. So these obviously have effects activate when summoned, and Stalking Shadows can basically create more copies of them, so these on-play effects can be duplicated easily. After you've dealt enough damage in the early game, it's time to burn your opponent out before they can really do anything in the later game to you. Spells like Nox and Favor and Decimate can quickly do this by dealing direct damage to the opponent's nexus. Overall, this deck is always very present with some extent of popularity in any meta, and although it's already fine by itself, it can easily be upgraded with some cards, but obviously this is really at the discretion of the deck builder, but you're never going to go wrong with any Shadow Isles Noxus deck, as they have a lot of really similar themes that work well together. So there we go guys, I had loads of requests to do another budget or starter deck themed video, especially with the new huge influx of people that joined with the Shroomer expansion. So this video was for you guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I was determined to start off the video with the Shroomer budget deck, as I know this is the region that made you guys join the game, so I thought it'd be a kind of nice deck idea to explore to try out some kind of funky new cards. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'm happy to make more videos like this if it's what you want to see. What is your favourite starter deck? I would love to hear in the comments. This channel is purely focused on Legends of Runeterra guides, looking at top 10s, best meta decks, budget decks, as well as predictions for upcoming patches. If you want more of this, you know what to do. The data presented here is analysed by Bomber TV using MOBA Analytics. He's a Masters tier player with a background in game theory and game design. He took the most winning art types into master tier, excluding ones with small play rates, analysed their key properties on why they are so strong. Link to his channel is in a pinned comment and in the card above. I've recently set up an Instagram account, at Law Guides, and I'll be doing a giveaway shortly. Please follow this account for see posts about new videos, and for being a chance of winning this giveaway. Please remember to like and subscribe and turn on bell notifications too. See you next time guys.